Have you ever wondered why it's really hard to go for round two? You maybe feel too sensitive or just too tired to get it back up again? I'm Dr. Rita Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon, and today we're gonna talk about the sexual refractory period. If you're new here, I make urologic content every Monday and Friday on bladder health, sexual health, and so much more. If you like what you see, make sure you subscribe and give me a thumbs up on this video. In order to understand what happens after ejaculation, you need to understand what happens before it or the sexual response cycle. This was developed by Masters and Johnson and it has four major steps. The first stage is excitement. During this phase, your heart rate goes up, you start breathing faster, your muscles start to clench up and your blood flow starts going to the genitals. Then you reach the plateau phase. At this point, your muscles continue to tense. In men or people with a penis, you may notice that your testicles start pulling up towards your penis. And in women or women with or vulva owners, you may see the clitoris retract under the clitoral hood. Then you reach orgasm. Your muscles finally contract and release all the tension. Your body gets flushed and red. And in men specifically, the pelvic floor muscles help you expel semen or have ejaculation. Your body also reacts. You have physical changes in your heart rate, your blood pressure, as well as your muscles contract. And all of this results in a feeling of pleasure and enjoyment. Then we reach resolution. This is when your physiologic parameters, your blood pressure and heart rate start to normalize, your muscles start to relax, and you become less responsive to sexual stimulation. And this is called the sexual refractory period in men called the post ejaculatory refractory period. So to start off, you really need to know the difference between orgasm and ejaculation. Orgasm is technically mediated by centers in your brain, whereas ejaculation is mediated by centers in your spinal cord called the spinal ejaculatory center. During ejaculation, there's two separate phases. There's emission when the semen gets released from the seminal vesicles and prostate into the posterior urethra, and then expulsion when the urethral sphincter contracts, the pelvic floor muscles relax, allowing that fluid to then go outside the body. So what exactly happens during this refractory period? It can be very difficult to get an erection, to get an orgasm, ejaculate, and it can be very difficult to stimulate arousal. This can be due to physiologic changes where your body will simply not allow further ejaculation or stimulation, whereas a psychological type when you're just too wiped out to go again. And when they look at this specific refractory time, you can divide this up as the absolute refractory time or a period of time where nothing is gonna get you stimulated at all and a relative refractory period. And at this point, you can get stimulated, but it will require a much stronger stimulus or a very novel stimulus. But they talk about this a lot in men, but does it happen in women? In women, as I've talked about in my video about female anatomy and the G-spot, the clitoris is homologous or identical to the penis as far as how it develops. It has the same sort of nervous structure and anatomical structure as the head of the penis or the glands penis and the shaft. And so you can imagine that if the penis gets sensitive after having sex, so can the clitoris. So they did a study where they surveyed over 100 college age women and they asked them how often did they have clitoral sensitivity and how often did they not want to have further clitoral stimulation after sex was done. And they found that an overwhelming majority, about 96% of women did experience this sensitivity after sex. So very likely women are also experiencing some sexual refractory period, although it's less often discussed. So the refractory period varies due to a lot of different factors, but typically young men have a short refractory period, sometimes only a few minutes, whereas older men, it can last much longer, usually between 12 to 24 hours, but for some people even longer than that. But what does the data say? So in multiple different studies, they found average rates for young healthy men to be somewhere between 11 minutes to one hour. However, interestingly, in a study where they looked at people who identified as premature ejaculators or those who ejaculated before they felt ready to, they found that their post-ejaculatory refractory time was significantly longer with an average of oh, up to five hours. Why exactly would our bodies have this particular protective mechanism in place? 
Obviously there has to be a scientific reason behind it. One reason that people think this ejaculatory refractory period may occur is because once you've expelled all the sperm from your body, it takes time for those sperm to replenish. And the whole purpose evolutionarily of sex is to procreate and continue your species. After ejaculation, you've completely depleted your sperm stores. It takes some time to replete those fully, and they replete at a rate of about 12.5 million per hour. It still doesn't make entire complete sense, but that may be one of the reasons why this happens. Another reason that people think this may exist is because it's to avoid displacement or moving the semen that you've already ejaculated. So if you go ahead and have sex a second time, the thrusting of the penis may actually displace the semen you've just ejaculated with, of course, semen that will have very low sperm counts. And the last reason is that it may serve as a protective mechanism to avoid people getting over fatigued or exhausted from sexual intercourse. So what in our bodies creates this variation in responsive time? Well, to be quite honest, we still don't know. There's been several different studies that have looked at different causes being maybe the nervous system and the actual conduction through the nerves to the penis, as well as different hormonal pathways. It was believed that an elevated level of prolactin was what caused this sexual refractory period because there was some small studies that showed that men who were able to have multiple orgasms had very low levels of prolactin. Lactin. However, this has later been debunked in other animal studies. Also, it's thought that having an increase in dopamine in the body can decrease the sexual refractory period, whereas things that increase serotonin can actually increase the refractory period. There have been two studies which have looked at the effect of sildenafil or Viagra on post-ejaculatory refractory times. And what they found is that they did see a slight difference in people who took sildenafil of different doses on this timing, they actually had the subjects or participants time themselves using a stopwatch. And they found that the post ejaculatory refractory time was 10 minutes without getting the sildenafil, whereas it went down to two minutes with the sildenafil. That was in 2000. Another study in 2003 looked at the same thing, but with a 25 milligram dose and also found a slight difference. So there's lots of different suggestions online. And one of these is because a lot of people feel that if they orgasm without ejaculation, they then don't get that sexual refractory period. So a lot of the discussion behind trying to delay ejaculation but continue having orgasms has potentially helped some people. However, this can be very stressful, very frustrating. So if this is not for you, please don't continue trying to do it if it's bringing you a lot of stress or anxiety into the bedroom or about your sexual performance. Other people have reported having multiple orgasms when they're on certain psychotropic medications and also trying to incorporate some novelty either with sex toys or different parts if that's what you're into, may help reduce this period. Lastly, what about multiple orgasms in men? Does it really happen? I mean, we hear about it in women all the time, but what about in men? Do men really get multiple orgasms? Essentially, younger men between the ages of 20 to 30, the estimates are about eight to 9% of men have multiple orgasms. However, when you look at the whole age demographic of men, that rate drops anywhere from three to 7%. So it's relatively rare. So there's kind of two ways this has been reported. Some people report having a normal ejaculation followed by many several dry orgasms following that, or others may report having multiple orgasms or a burst of orgasms followed by an ejaculation right at the end. So the take home from this video is that everyone experiences a sexual refractory period, and that period can be widely variable, and potentially in younger men, it can be shorter, and as you age, it does get longer. While there's lots of recommendations on public forums and other things, very few things have been studied in the scientific literature in controlled studies. So I hope you found this helpful. As always, remember to take care of yourself because you're worth it.